it just has always been a part of the conversation, our relationship. We started looking into ways that we could adopt. At that point though, we were 23, 24, 24, uh, and you know, one income family with a newborn baby, very busy time of life, and uh, it seemed kind of insurmountable, the, the obstacles that were there, one being financial, the other one being our age, uh, to do international adoption. So we really felt like God laid in our hearts to be purposeful about our commitment towards adoption. So even though we didn't feel like the answer was yes at that moment, the answer was not yet. And so we felt like we needed to take steps and prayed about it. And so for the last seven years, we've actually put money aside every month towards adoption. And we didn't know what that was going to look like. We didn't know if that was going to be for our adoption or maybe someday was to give to someone else for adoption. But we just really felt called to it. We prayed about it and we took steps towards keeping the doors as open as possible. Um, and we went through some ups and downs in life and... Like there was one day Sarah sent me an email, talked about adoption from South Korea and I just called her up and I said, honey, what, this is, why don't we just go for South Korea? Like, let's just go for it. And so when he called me in Costco and said, let's do it. I did. I started crying in the middle of Costco. <laughs> we went through things through. really, really fast, and it was amazing and awesome. And they told us, oh, it'll be a few months till you get matched. Four weeks later, we got a match. It was crazy. We couldn't say no. <laughs> yeah. He, he, uh... So yeah, our little boy, or the little boy that we got sent is, was 11 months old when he was referred to us back in June. Mm. And, um... To make a long story short, medically he just had a really rough start to life. But unfortunately, since we accepted his referral the first week of July, um, we haven't had anything happen. So we're waiting right now in that long adoption phase of waiting. We had applied for many grants and we got a no from all of them, except for Life Song for Orphans. It's the only one we got. And I was driving from home um, from work and I got a phone call from them saying that we got a $2,500 matching grant. And I had to pull over because I was crying. I was so happy because I was just feeling torn about how do we go about approaching people about giving money and how do we make ends meet. And I was just, there had been no example set for us. So we just didn't know how to move forward. Um, so we had to, we kind of had to humble ourselves yeah. and really trust that, you know, God, that, that was a, that the receiving the grant was just a, another affirmation of like God saying, you know what, you need to go forward with this, but not only go forward with the adoption, but you need to share what, mm -hmm. uh, what's on your heart and what, what this is for your family and what this means for the church. That's just really exciting to be a part of because adoption is God's heart. I mean, it's, it's, he's done it for us. So if, if it's good enough for him to do it to us, it's good enough for us to emulate in our own lives and, and replicate. So not everyone's called to adoption. I think we know that we would never expect, you know, everyone to be called to adoption, but I think everyone's called to care about it. And yeah, so we definitely want to say thank you. I'm glad we get to say thank you. I yeah. just, it's amazing that it's like a local church and that, yeah, that we get to say thank you to you guys and we're just really, really appreciative.